90.5 The Night, Brookdale Public Radio. Jeff Raspi here with you. And I've got our old friend Cranston Dean here. Well, not in the studio with us, but, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> what can you do? Well, you can do this, apparently. Um, so I'm doing a, a little conversation here with Cranston. We're going to talk about a couple of things, most notably the upcoming Park Fest uh, event happening in Atlantic Highlands on Saturday, July 31st. But actually, before we get to that, I do want to make mention of the fact that Cranston has a brand new album out called When It Rains. Uh, started, recorded, and finished all during lockdown? Oh, for the most part. Didn't release it until uh, last month. A couple weeks ago, yeah. Recorded it and uh, wrote most a lot of it during lockdown and uh, recorded and, and did all the editing and mixing while we were in the thick of things. So, <laughs> Yeah, because I, I definitely knew at least one, maybe two of the songs from having seen you play yep. be before we couldn't see you play. Um so that, the, that <laughs> the before times. Um, so that, so um, just to talk about that for a, a minute, um, did you, because I've talked to a number of musicians uh, over the last few months and everybody, I mean, it's, I guess it's the same as the general public. Everybody handled what we all went through differently um some folks took it as okay i'm gonna take some time off i am gonna spend time with my significant other and my kids uh because <laughs> um, if especially if you're a touring musician you don't actually you don't count on being able to be there for certain kid milestones sure and when you're you know over the last year and a half you were forced to be home so i know a lot of a lot of um musicians who are new parents were so excited about the fact that they'd be able to be a part of at least a year and a half maybe even two years of of uh a child's growth uh when you know you kind of all go into it thinking well i'm a touring musician if i have kids i'm gonna miss a lot that's just the way it is. So they jumped at the chance. Other folks um, took it as an opportunity to, you know, do all those other projects that they don't normally have the time to do, whether it's, you know, a solo album or, you know, a complete departure type of album or stuff like that. Well, I saw a couple friends get together since everything was this online collaboration, if anything. So a couple friends do some albums with buddies that lived completely remotely from each other. And they wouldn't have been able to do that if the standard was still at, well, we got to get to the same recording yep. studio or to a recording studio. It's kind of like, oh, you're recording at home? Great. Me too. Send me some stems and yep. uh, let's see what happens. So that was cool to see that over the year for sure. Yeah. And that, that was, that was the, the other option I was going to get to was, was being able to remotely collaborate with people you wouldn't have had the chance to. So, yeah, so that's good. So, so in your case, um, When It Rains is technically just you, right? I, it was my weirdo, my weirdo 2020 uh, quarantine album and – since most of my bands couldn't get the same time to to i had to do like a two-week quarantine because mm -hmm. at the time i went up to record uh we weren't exactly sure about how accurate the tests were the uh the up the nose tests and so i did a two-week quarantine and then i took a test and then it was like well if it says no after you've been doing nothing for two weeks yeah. we're pretty sure that you're good and um because my bandmates couldn't really get on that as well, uh, I just decided, well, I'm going to go up there and I play some drums. I dabble in the bass. <laughs> I play a little bit of mandolin and uh, guitar and keys. So I just kind of built out the album and uh, I performed and wrote it all. And my buddy Mike Young 
up in Maine. He recorded and mixed it and uh, or edited it. We had our buddy Pat Noon mix it, and a guy named Alan Douch is up at West West Side Music in New York. He did the mastering, and uh, so the four of us got to got it done. I'm glad that I was able to do something over that weird year, you know. <laughs> well, and it actually just it brought up a question that I I don't think I have asked any of the other folks I've spoken to, um, mostly because it just never even occurred to me. Are because we we've all been looking at the 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 silver lining of the year and a half. Like oh, I got to do the project I always wanted to do, but never had the time. I got to spend time at home. Was there anything missing in the making of this album that I don't want to say you regret, but you kind of wish could have happened, even though, as we just discussed, couldn't happen? <laughs> I think the camaraderie, like I, I like uh, any time I've made a full band album, they're like, it brings the band closer together just by getting in and kind of hashing ideas out, accomplishing something obviously brings people together. And so uh, definitely the band camaraderie was something that I, I missed on this, but at the same time, it was nice to, I have a whole nother band album ready to go that we were going to start recording right as the pandemic lifted off. Like Shane was on board to come up from Philly, Riley and Ike were on board. And then, uh, the pandemic happened and there was a couple weeks where we thought oh two weeks and it'll be over yeah. and then we'll, then we'll go we'll just get, and then that two weeks kept pushing and pushing and pushing and at a certain point i was like well i have a bunch of other songs let's go do those and get something out because i felt like i was a little bit uh lacking in in new music i hadn't put anything out since i think 2017 or 18 somewhere in that was it that, that long? wow it was that long since i put a, a recorded piece of music out I'd written a bunch and I'd been playing a lot, but yeah. I hadn't uh, recorded anything. So it was it was high time for me to get something out there. Yeah, because I think that was the other thing that came up. Like, just as lockdown started, there were a number of folks, uh, and and the one I will always remember and think of is Brian Fallon. He had an album scheduled to come out the Friday, everything shut down. <laughs> so not only did he not get to do the touring for the album uh it was too short notice for him to change the release date it just had to be uh, i know a lot of other folks put off like move the release date by a month and you know again thinking oh well it'll be good and then finally just realizing, okay, this is, this is not going to end anytime soon. Let it come out. We'll, we'll just, you know. Put we'll, it out on the band camp Friday. Yeah. We're having those. Yeah, which, which was great. And kudos to band camp for, for doing that literally every Friday. Um, I don't think they started the first month, but they may have started as quickly as the second month of lockdown. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, yeah, you know, at least on that first Friday of every month, everything you bought, all the proceeds went directly. You know, they they didn't take a cut. And to uh, be honest, not to toot their own horn too much, but they usually don't take too much of a cut, right, from the artist in the first place. So it was even like above and beyond what they were yeah. doing with that. That was really cool. Go band camp. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jeff Raspi here with Cranston Dean. We've been uh, chatting for the last few minutes about his new album, When It Rains. But the real reason he's here is to talk about Park Fest, which is happening in Atlantic Islands on Saturday, July 31st. It's an all-day thing. Starts at 12 noon, right? Yep, 12 noon, um, probably 11.30 if we're being honest. It might get a little little early and a little bit later than uh, what we got scheduled, so make sure you come down to town early. As long as everyone's ready. <laughs> yep, yep, we'll all be ready. We'll be ready, I promise. <laughs> so now this is the third annual, and uh, you, you don't even have to say 
it missed 2020, right? Didn't you guys do something 2020? We did, yeah. This is our third annual Park Fest. It's also our third location for Park Fest. <laughs> in uh, 2019, we were in Highlands, which is, if you're not from northern Monmouth County, they're two different towns right next to each other, Atlantic Highlands and Highlands. They uh, share a high school. There's a lot of confusion. A lot of people call them the Highlands. Mm-hmm. And uh, just if you come around here, everyone, if you're not, if you're from away and you come in here, there's people that will get a little bit upset if you call it the Highlands. As somebody who's lived here my whole life, <laughs> I understand. I get it. It's, it's got to be highly confusing to anybody that two towns with uh, one shared word in their name uh, aren't the same exact town. They're not. We moved to the next town over for this one. And in 2020, we just kept it all virtual. There was all that live streaming going on. Yep. And uh, Joe Palm from Telegraph Hill Records figured out a way that we could have the artists live stream and it would come in. I think we used a, a thing called Steam Yard. And it would all come in through one feed but they would just kind of call in like it's a Zoom meeting, like here. And uh, so, yeah, this is our third third year running. We haven't taken a year off, even though we've hit some uh, speed bumps and hiccups. But, hey, <laughs> got to get it done. Got to make it happen, folks. That's right. So, so you mentioned that this year it's going to be in Atlantic Highlands. Um, so, uh, for, well, let's, let's talk about that first. Um, given the... Highlands, Atlantic Highlands, friendly rivalry, let's say. <laughs> um, what what brings the show to Atlantic Highlands this well, year? And, and, and where exactly is it going to be compared to like where it was in the first year down in, in Highlands? Without pointing fingers, uh, I would say it's because Atlantic Highlands wanted it to happen. And it's going to be located at the Atlantic Islands Municipal uh, Marina, which is if you just drive down First Avenue at Atlantic Islands towards the water, Mm -hmm. you can't miss it. It's going to be right there. We have a big green area right by the gazebo. We have a a nice little gazebo. Mm -hmm. There's a friendly rivalry going in between the two towns. I think if you live here for a long period of time, there's less of a rivalry uh, than Mm -hmm. there is. But There's a lot of... There's a lot of newer folks that have moved into the area. So it's going to be at the marina. So th- this is, like you said, if you go down First Ave in Atlantic Highlands, it's uh, basically just before you get wet. Yes, it's right before <laughs> you get wet. If you get wet, you've gone too far. Just turn <laughs> and we'll have a place for you to dry off. But, yeah, it'll be right at the uh, municipal harbor right there in uh, – Kind of, if anybody's gone to the Atlantic Highlands Fireman's Fair, it's where they set up a lot of the rides in the Fireman's Fair. Okay. And uh, we'll be having 15 original New Jersey acts. So there's a lot of live original music from Jersey, which is, uh, as far as like the event organizers, that's our our idea and that's our, our goal. It's to make sure that it's highlighting original music because there's so much, many good original acts in New mm-hmm. Jersey. And uh, no offense to the cover guys. So our idea was let's keep it very original music centric because there's not enough love for that. I don't believe in uh, anywhere in the world. I I don't think, you know what I mean? Like, so, and you've got, frankly, some of the best in the area. And yeah, I think so. Do you mind? Do you want to read some of them off, or do you? No, I was. I was. I was going to test you. I was going to say, can you name them all? I can name them all, but it's mostly because I got a cheat sheet in front of me. But we're <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, from Leonardo, New Jersey. We got a new band. They've just started putting out music. I know ninety point five has played them uh, recently. They put out two singles so far. They're called Spirit Fox. Mm-hmm. Sweet people, great band. We got uh, Mark Tappen. Mark A. Tappen is what the the poster says. But Mark Tappen has been uh, playing in a band called The Dirty Shine. He's been all over the Jersey area for years and years now. He's the only repeat offender we have from our first Park Fest. Wait, we do really? want to keep, We have so many great original acts in New Jersey that we didn't want to have the same over and over and over again. Okay. Nobody that you see this year 
has been at the previous park fests, uh, or at least not in the in-person one. We got Alexander Simone and the Hudak crew. And if anybody isn't familiar with Alexander and that whole band, they're some of the most talented new musicians I've seen. They're playing music that's just different. I haven't heard music like that yet. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> they're on a different wave. Then we got Mr. Ticklehands. I'm sure you've heard Mr. Ticklehands. <laughs> Brother Andrew and Roshane. Roshane is busy playing with the front bottoms, but he also has time to do all this other great stuff. We got Ross Owen in the tribe. I don't know if you've – have you heard Ross yet? I have. I've I've again seen him at the Chubby Pickle. Um, and I, I know the first time I saw him, I, I, I'm going to say it was you who said you gotta you gotta stay inside and and listen to this kid and and he was a kid i think i think he was still in high school at the time i he think was probably still in high school at that time i think he's 20 right now he just turned 20 recently like i don't mean to call him a kid because he makes yeah. he makes full-grown music that guy like he really is something special and he's also one that uh when i was making when it rains that was an inspiration of mine because on all of his albums, he plays all the instruments mm -hmm. much better than I do on When It Rains. And I got to say, you got to check it out, everybody. I think I do a good job playing all those instruments. But Ross Owen, whoo, next level.
his father is a, actually a Grammy Grammy Award nominated uh, producer. I think he won one as well. But um, Suzanne Vega, he's worked with his father, so he comes from a recording background, okay. uh, a family that that knows how to record well. And they're from right here in Navisink, New Jersey, right on the other side, uh, another friendly rivalry town that we have. Henry Hudson, uh, <laughs> the high school that Atlantic Highlands and Highlands both go to, we share a high school. And then as far as Little League baseball goes growing up, we share a Little League with Navisink as well, okay. Highlands and Navisink. So they're also very, very adjacent uh, to our, our particular local community. And Ross is from right there in Navisink, so... That's been dope. On top of that, we got Brian Hansen band. We got a band called Backhouse who just started up. They're doing the thing. A band called Flourish. And then we got a local band called the Elastic Waste Band. And then we have a, a nine, what do we got? Two, six, sorry, six uh, acoustic acts. We got Daily Rituals, Chris Morrissey, who's an Atlantic Islands guy, Jesse McCormick, who plays in Foes of Ferns. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan Gregg from the Incredible Shady Street Show Band. He's doing a solo set. We got a tree, a special trio set from Kuf Knotts, Christine Elise, and Joseph Alton Miller, who yes. is just a really good friend of mine. And I can't believe we got the three of them on there. Yeah. And then the yeah. Wish to round it all out. Yeah. And then if, if anybody knows Joseph Alton Miller, you know it's just he's one of the most captivating performers yeah. and storytellers as far as the stories that go into his songs. But then when he's singing, he looks you right dead in the eye. Like thousand yard stare times 10. It's really great. And yeah. uh, I'm excited for the three of them together. Yeah. And he's one of those guys that doesn't need uh, all of the stuff around him to grab your attention. He's just, he's one of those guys that can, you know, with just standing there with a guitar and a harmonica and a microphone he can reach out and grab you and get a bar down to drop a pin yeah. level of volume yeah. where everyone really is waiting on bated breath for him to do the next thing. Or, yeah. He, he's an incredible performer. I think everyone that we got, we, that was one on top of that. They make original music and they play in New Jersey. Well, the other stipulation was that they're really good performers and, yeah. really and, and, and they are all from the area. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, well, <laughs> Koof and Joe might be the ones from the furthest away. This life is full of magic. Keep it live. 
for the listener Every day writing till my pen went inkless Had to hustle hard, taking many jobs Knowing down the road a pot of gold I would come upon Had to hustle hard, taking many jobs Knowing down the road a pot of gold I would come upon Yeah, and then after that, it's Brian Hansen band, but they're really just based out of Edison, that area anyway. Yeah. So I, I've recently started playing up in Edison. I had no idea it takes 35 minutes to get from here to there. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, like just as far as Asbury Park. Really cool. Yeah. It's a cool scene that they got up there. And I, I encourage other Jersey musicians and Jersey music fans to get up to Edison and the Touchin and Fords and Woodbridge and kind of check out what's going on up there. It's a different vibe. You kind of beat the uh, the beach people. Yep. Like as a shore kid, I kind of like going away for the weekend and not having to deal with yeah. stop and go traffic <laughs> on Highway 36. That's just me. But yeah. <laughs> and if you're that kind of person too, listener, you know, go up to Edison and and Metuchen and Fords. There's some good stuff happening. Up Absolutely. There. Jeff Rasby here with Cranston Dean. We're talking about Park Fest happening Saturday, July 31st. Starting around 12 at the Atlantic Highlands Municipal Marina at the end of first in Atlantic Highlands. Uh, 15 acts, um, all from the New Jersey, all definitely from New Jersey, but all, almost all, like, literally from uh, the immediate area, too. All playing original music. Uh, and you mentioned that except for Mark Tappan, everyone is different from the last in-person Park Fest, which was 2019, and that would include you. Yes, not being on the bill this year, myself and uh, Matt Fernicola from mm -hmm. Poser and we're two of the organizers, and uh, we made a conscious decision, like, hey, maybe we shouldn't book a, a music festival that we also play. I love playing, and I would love to play this the whole time. Anytime we were looking <laughs> for one gig to fill, me and Matt were ready to play rock, paper, scissors, shoot for who got to took the swim, <laughs> took the spot. But uh, we both agreed that it was best. Like, let's no, let's see what we can get, see who we can get, and uh, and highlight. We're going to be doing one of the after parties. We're going to be spreading some after parties out around town when the stage is okay. uh, the main stage is dark. We're going to start doing some after parties. So Matt and I will both be at the Chubby Pickle in Highlands, the next town down to anybody else that uh, isn't from the Bayshore. But um, so we are technically, we're playing that day, but we're not okay. going to be a part of the event. And that's just because there's so many other great acts to see. And we didn't want to take up uh, two spots on something we booked ourselves, you know? Yeah. Felt it. No, felt that's, it to do that. that's commendable. Because um, usually... You know, somebody creates an event and the main reason is to put themselves in it, <laughs> which there's nothing wrong with that. But hey, if they, if they went ahead and made the event happen, yeah. I'm just glad that a good event happened. And Absolutely, I'm yeah. just glad I mean, if you're going to go through the trouble of organizing it, the least payoff you could get is actually playing it. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, but so, and the, uh, for more information, you can go to uh, facebook.com slash parkfestnj 
or follow them on Instagram at Parkfest NJ. Uh, the show is free. We haven't mentioned that yet. It is free. Free, free is better. It should be publicly accessible. It is also uh, ADA accessible as far as uh, chairs go. So there will be, there's enough pavement on the sides of the event seating that we can get you there. And if you uh, are, if, if there's anybody out there that is looking to come and would like a little more assistance with ADA requirements, we can, we can make something work for you, whether it be a translator for sign language or more specific seating areas. Oh, if you cool. want to get way up close, we'll try to facilitate that with anybody. But uh, on top of it, we just want to make it an event that anybody can come to, have a good time, experience some community. If you're coming from out of town, uh, we have some events set up along our main business district, which is really closer than I've walked at festivals before to go to food or to go to yeah. concessions. So I think it, it'll work out just fine that you're going to have to go to the businesses themselves right on uh, First Ave, our main drag, to get some food. But uh, there's bathrooms right over there. So with all that being said, it's all free. All the businesses are up in there. But we are trying to raise a little bit of money. And uh, we can do that through donations that day. There's going to be a couple 50-50s going that day. And a, a link to donate in advance. And oh, okay. all the proceeds from this are going to be going to the Atlantic Islands Arts Council, which is one of our main sponsors this year. They're helping uh, get pretty much everything going for us. They're, they're really, really big help. And then it's going to be split between the Arts Council and the Atlantic Islands First Aid Squad. So both good reasons to uh, donate a little bit of money. It's not going to be lining our pockets, although all the musicians I've talked to in uh, the history of forever – could use a little lining of the pockets, but you could do that by just buying our CDs and that. That's as far as the event the, going, you know, we, we always, want to be able to always the most them. direct way to get money directly to an artist. CD. Just, just now, I, I mean, from I be the best at taking that money and putting it away for the next batch of CDs. It might go into, oh, I'm going to get some, uh, I'm going to get a cheeseburger and cheese fries. <laughs> Oop, CD gone, but. For this particular event, uh, we are doing some donations ahead of time, donations day of 50-50, and we're taking in sponsors as well. And the proceeds from that are going to be split between the First Aid Squad and the Arts Council here in Atlantic Islands. We're also partnering with the Food Bank here in Atlantic Islands to get some non-perishable good goods, not just canned goods, but they need, uh, you know, boxes of rice they have a lot of yeah. cans so maybe if, if anybody's thinking on that idea and wants to come and bring some food let's go the rice aroni route and some yeah, things. Rice think pasta, the, beans yeah. and, and canned corn uh not that they'll turn that away but just as a heads up so we are trying to make it a community-centric event and that also gets something back to the community we don't have much to give aside from our time but if we can kind of rally people to give a little and then disperse that. I think we can get a really uh, productive event and a fun one for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so do you know offhand, um, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to picture myself going down first Ave in, in Atlantic Highlands uh, parking. Parking is going to be tough on first Ave itself. It always is, but it's down that, in the Harbor itself. That's, we have that's what I was parking. kind of thinking of. Like, it's always hard to park on first Ave. It is. We do have a couple municipal parking lots down in the Harbor and that's where you'll be able to park. Oh, okay. The best. If you are in walking distance of the event, just as if it were any other event happening on the Bay shore, we would say we recommend that you walk just because parking will be tough, but there will be a spot for you if you have the patience. You just, sometimes you got to pray to the parking gods. Cranston <laughs> Dean, Jeff Raspi here with you on 90.5 The Night. Park Fest is happening Saturday, July 31st, starting at around 12 at the Atlantic Highlands Municipal Marina in, as the name would suggest, Atlantic Highlands. Uh, all day music, live music, original music, uh, also food, art, um, did I see something yoga about yoga? Going at eight, uh, 1130 in the morning as well. It's going to be What's free that? sign up if anybody's looking to get their yoga on. I was going to, yeah, I was yoga in the morning. 
Uh, and uh, you mentioned a couple of after parties, or at least one. You, your, band, your band and Foes of Fern at Chubby Pickle. And then there'll be a couple, couple others at the bars throughout town. We're also uh, working, knock on wood, where's real wood? That's definitely fake wood. Uh, knock on wood, we're going to be getting a, a comedy show going. And uh, <laughs> I, I talked to, well, we have a movie theater here in town that is under new ownership now. And we talked to the guy, and he seems receptive to the idea of maybe having a comedy show. So if it gets too hot out there, Oh. Just know that there might be, there at least will be a movie theater that you can go cool down and get some AC and catch a film. But there also might be a comedy show. That will be a ticketed event, but uh, it will be, I already spoke to her, and it would be hosted by Allie Mae Brand of uh, Stress Factory Comedy <laughs> Club in New Brunswick fame. Her family uh, is, is comedy royalty, really, especially in New Jersey. And uh, they've been doing a great job putting together shows in the immediate area. They sold out a couple with bon uh, Bond Street with Bonnie McFarland and uh, just really great comedians. Check out Ally Mae Brand for fans of comedy out there. Cool. And so we're hoping to expand a little bit of the footprint down first half. That's just uh, time's ticking on that one, but that's that's some of the stuff that I'll be doing in the next week. Or so. <laughs> Getting some little extra events so that uh, it's a bigger footprint than we already got. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, once again, for more information, visit facebook.com slash parkfestnj or on Instagram, parkfestnj. Uh, as always, thanks a million, Cranston. Thank you so much, Jeff. One of these days you'll get to come to back. You. <laughs> you'll get to in come back in the studio. Um, uh, one of these days you can come back in the studio. Um, I do, I do actually have the list written down in front of me. Spirit Fox, Mark A. Tappen, Alexander Simone and Houdat, Mr. Tickle Hands, Ross Owen and the Tribe, Brian Hansen Band, Back House, Flourish, Elastic Waist Band, which just might be my favorite band name of 2021. <laughs> Those are our local boys right there. <laughs> and then the Daily Rituals, Chris Morrissey, Jesse McCormick from the Foes of Fern, uh, Ryan Gregg from the Shady Street Show Band, Kufnats, Christine Elise, and Joseph Alton Miller together, and The Well Wish, all performing for you Saturday, July 31st, starting at around 12, the third annual Park Fest down at the Atlantic Highlands Municipal Marina. Looking forward to it myself. Um, I'm not even going to ask what happens if Mother Nature has other ideas because i don't want to jinx it <laughs> but just in case she does i believe it's going to be the very next day right in the same place we're still waiting on the last of the approvals from that application <laughs> but uh that's that's our plan is very very next day same spot okay same channel and uh before we do go i just want to i i forgot to thank the atlantic islands recreation committee who's the one that ah. took us under their umbrella in the first place we fall under their insurance we oh, couldn't really get this done at all without them. So I do have to thank Coach Whitehead and everybody over at the Recreation Committee because I know that they're fans of Brookdale Public Radio, so they'll probably hear this. 90.5 the night, baby. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Um, and uh, look forward to seeing you Saturday, July 31st at around 12 noon for uh, the third annual Park Fest. Cranston Dean, not only one of the great – uh, Jersey Shore musicians and songwriters, but also uh, one of the organizers of Park Fest. So uh, once again, thank you so much for being. Well, you're you're there. I'm here. We're here. But We're being here, here together, yeah. <laughs> being here, quote unquote, tonight. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll see you at uh, Park Fest. Sounds good. I have a copy of When It Rains for you, a physical copy. You know, I don't forget that. <laughs> Thanks a million. See you there. See you, Thank Who you. that? Where y'all at? Who that? <laughs> Who that? Who that? This song right here says we travelers. It's our Who That Chant. Oh,
Whatever we go, 